Now, Cuba's attitude towards foreign direct investment has undergone dramatic changes since the revolution in the 1960s. Back then, the regime nationalized properties and businesses. The island nation enjoyed subsidies from what was then the Soviet Union. With the sudden withdrawal of Soviet money in the 1990s, Fidel Castro tried a, a more liberalized approach and welcomed investment from Europe, Canada, and Latin America. As the economy improved, Castro reevaluated the role of foreign investment. He then limited and canceled foreign ventures. Starting in the mid-2000s, state-owned enterprises partnered with companies in Venezuela, China, and Brazil. Since then, economic reforms and a push to reduce corruption have help, helped ease some concerns from foreign investors. But challenges remain. Critics of Raul Castro's government say inconsistencies with the foreign investment laws and bureaucracy keeps investors away. Cuba has seen a foreign investment tick up in the last few years as tourism and mining sectors have opened up to foreign partnerships. That's a trend the World Bank predicts will continue this year. Jose Azel left Cuba in 1961 as a child political refugee. Today, He's a senior scholar at the University of Miami's Institute for Cuban and Cuban-American Studies. I asked him if the reforms of President Castro are working. Cuba has deteriorated from 1958, being one of the most prosperous uh, economies in, in our hemisphere, to a level of Haiti, one of the poorest countries. And, and none of this is really going to, to help the so-called reforms that have been introduced by uh, General Castro amount for the most part in allowing Cubans to become self-employed in precisely 181 rather menial activities. These are not the kinds of activities that are going to help develop the Cuban economy. What about the, this opening up of foreign investment where foreigners, e even including parts of the U.S. economy, potentially could invest in Cuba might that work? Well, I don't know of any serious company that is going to invest in, in, the, in, in, in Cuba. Uh, Cuba is rated by the Heritage Foundation as one of the worst countries in the world for investment. I think uh, superseded only by North Korea. Um, when you're talking about investment, it's not investment investing in Cuba, it's investing with Cuba because you can only hold a minority interest with the military being the majority shareholder. So to begin with, you, you have to be a minority investor. And just to give you an idea, a foreign company investing in Cuba or with Cuba cannot even hire its own employees. It must solicit whatever labor force it requires from the Cuban government the Cuban government will then provide the employees that it chooses. The foreign company has to pay the Cuban government's agency in convertible currency, and then the Cuban government pay these poor employees in Cuban pesos, essentially keeping about 90% of the salaries. Okay, so the, what, what you're highlighting here, and this is a good point because these are some structural issues that a lot of people have been critical about the Cuban economy that they need to change these issues in order to open up to get to the next step. If you were in charge of the Cuban reforms right now, what would be the first two or three things that are necessary to be done in order to get on with the next step? Well, the, the first thing, and perhaps one of the most critically important, would be to unify the currency. As you probably know, Cuba has two currencies in, in place, so it needs to unify the currency. And second, just allow freedom, allow uh, people to invest freely, not to have to be a minority partner investing with the Cuban government, uh, being the majority partner, um, and simply to, to free up the economic activity. These new reforms really do not amount to much more than a reduction in taxes, opening up a few sectors for investment, but it's not changing the fundamental law of 1995, as we understand it, um, so that it's still all of the same kinds of restrictions are in place. This is nowhere near the kind of much more profound reforms, for example, that Deng Xiaoping introduced in, in China nearly 40 years ago, uh, which were much more uh, profound and radical than what Cuba is doing, which is just 
at the margin. That was Jose Azel from the University of Miami's Institute for Cuban and Cuban-American Studies.